Hi everyone, my name is Emily Pedrazzi and today in AP Psychology we will be talking about how to alter your brain's chemistry by harnessing your neurotransmitters. Before we get started, make sure to follow at ThinkViable on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube for a bunch of AP updates, memes, all that cool stuff. So in this stream we'll have a bunch of different discussions about biological psychology, neurotransmitters, neurotransmitters and psychiatric conditions, kind of the links and causes, how to correct your brain's chemistry using neurotransmitters, and then just a brief recap. So biological psychology goes under a few different names. Just for the sake of the stream, we're gonna be calling it biological psychology, but you may also hear behavioral neuroscience, biopsychology, and there might even be more that aren't listed. So biological psychology, it's a psychological approach that focuses on the chemical and biological reasoning behind aspects of psychology. So all the stuff that's going on in your brain with the neurotransmitters and all that, we'll have a diagram on that coming up. It'll play a large part in the nature versus nurture debate. Charles Darwin was the first person who introduced this concept of genes affecting behavior in humans. You might have heard is, you might have heard about Darwinism in your science classes, which is like survival of the fittest, which kind of fits in with that. And biological psychology is ultimately the focus of AP Psychology Unit 2, or one of the key focuses. So here we have a little diagram just showing how the neurotransmitters and the receptors work. So like the um, little ball looking things on the diagrams represent the neurotransmitters and they're going into the receptors. There's some conditions that don't have this working as normal, but we'll go into that afterwards. So the neurotransmitters. The first neurotransmitter is often just referred to as ACH is how you'll see it on the exam, but I have the long name written out and it's great for attention, learning, memory, and muscle function. Next up, we have dopamine, which is great for mood, emotion, and arousal. And we'll get into how these tie into mental illnesses in a second here. Endorphins, which are positive emotions, stress re reduction, and pain control. GABA, which is kind of a complex one. GABA and glutamate go together. But GABA is great for regulating your sleep cycles, and glutamate is great for learning and long-term memory. That's not all, though, because there's norefine, which has, which is great for your alertness, your mood elevation, your arousal. Then there's serotonin, which is great for mood regulation, hunger, and sleep. A lot of these functions overlap, but it's still great to understand all the key areas that they affect. So let's get into some questions about neurotransmitters. So which neurotransmitters should be adjusted if a person has frequent concentration issues? This might be a hard question if you haven't been introduced to neurotransmitters prior to this, but the answer would be ACH. And that's because that affects concentration, muscle memory, all of that fun stuff. And that would fall into ADHD. And then a person who's suffering from poor mood regulations may have which issue with, with may have an issue with which of the neurotransmitters. This one's kind of an overlapping question, so there's actually multiple answers. Dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine are all all affect mood regulation and can be seen in mood disorders. So people with insomnia may have irregular levels of which neurotransmitter? The answer would be GABA and serotonin because those both affect sleep. After this, let's get into like the excess and deficit of neurotransmitters and how they cause certain psychiatric conditions. So an excess of ACH would cause muscle spasms, but a deficit would cause Alzheimer's disease, or at least there is a correlation between the two. And then an excess of dopamine results in problems with schizophrenia or substance addiction. And then a deficit would be Parkinson's disease. Endorphins would, in excess, 
cause issues with pain response, as you might not feel pain at that point. There are certain conditions linked to that as well. And then a deficit may lead to an addiction to opiates because of the fact that you can't regulate that pain pro properly and opiates are a method of pain relief. With GABA, an excess causes regular sleeping cycles and some eating disorders, while a deficit causes Huntington's disease, anxiety, epilepsy, and insomnia. Those are kind of linked with, there's a link between GABA and glutamate, which we will get into later. So there might be some overlap in the issues. So with glutamate, an excess would cause migraines and seizures, but if you're in deficit, you might suffer from insomnia, some concentration issues, or just overall mental fatigue. And then an excess of a norfine fund would cause anxiety, while a deficit would cause various mental disorders. And then serotonin in excess would be hallucinations, and then deficit would be mood disorders, such as depression. So the connection between medications and neurotransmitters is relatively, relatively clear. You have antidepressants, which boost your serotonin for mood disorders. There's also antidepressants that do the other, that um, boost other neurotransmitters, but I'm just talking about SSRIs here. And then you might have ACH for ADHD. So getting into actually correcting your chemistry. Starting off, the methods will vary based on the neurotransmitter in question. And dietary changes and medication should be handled with the consultation of a doctor, just because it's stuff that you can affect overall, but it has a large impact and you're not fully sure of how it may handle, how it may work in your body. And it might take weeks or months for the corrections to take effect, depending on what you're trying to fix and your body. It's just highly complex overall due to the large number of factors in biochemistry and psychology. And so how to increase your uh, ACH? You should be lifting heavy weights, consuming foods with clo uh, choline, which is like meat, dairy, fish, poultry. Reducing stress overall, which there's a bunch of different ways to do that. You can do yoga and meditation, which will also help with other neurotransmitters. Or you can just use supplements, which once again, consult your doctor before trying to increase or decrease anything. Now increasing your dopamine. You should try to meditate, listen to music, sleep, or less healthy, but it's still a way to increase your dopamine, caffeinated beverages, which will increase it in the moment, but it'll disrupt your long-term production. So it's recommended to not rely too heavily on caffeinated beverages. Now we have increasing endorphins. You can do this by exercising, laughing, smelling certain aromas. Lavender is a great example of this. And then there's also yoga and meditation, which we talked about earlier. Now GABA and glutamate. So these neurotransmitters work together to handle processes such as uh, excitement and they have a complex relationship and balance. You don't want to have too much of one or too little of the other. You want to make sure that you have an even balance. Otherwise that neurotransmitter will begin to mess with your whole body's chemistry. Now to increase your uh, norepinephrine, you should Exercise, consume foods with tyrosine, such as animal products like fish, poultry, dairy, etc. Exposure to cold water also helps, which is more of a short term thing, but if you need some of that, like on the fly, just splash some cold water on your face, take a cold bath. And then you can also use supplements. After that, we have serotonin. So you can increase your serotonin by sleeping properly, getting enough sunlight, even just 30 minutes a day is more than enough to up your serotonin, reduce stress, and then consume foods with uh, tryptophan, which, such as like nuts, cheese, eggs. Antidepressants also come into play here for mental conditions. So just a brief recap, 
The seven neurotransmitters you should be familiar with the AP, for the AP exam are uh, ACH, dopamine, endorphins, GABA, glutamate, norfine, and serotonin. They all have different purposes, although some have overlapping functions. And then medications serve the purpose of correcting chemical imbalances in neurotransmitters from a psychiatric condition, from a psychiatric perspective. And then a chemical imbalance goes both ways. As you saw in the earlier slides, excess and deficit are both capable of increasing health risks for various conditions. And that's about it for today, but if you have any additional questions, pop them in the chat, or if you're watching the review, just message me out on Instagram at emily.pedrazzi, and I will get to your questions as soon as I can.